We are getting warmer quicker than anywhere else. And we don't mind, because it means we get to sit on our mountains and watch the fucking English drown. <laughs> Another pineapple, Huey? <laughs> no thanks, Willie, I've got a coconut here. <laughs> it's a pity we can't harness more natural energy, isn't it? It's a pity we can't harness the power of British moaning. Oh, no, that moaning powered light bulb isn't working again. Oh, no, there it is, back on. <laughs> Have you ever heard that science thing? That if you put a frog into boiling water, it will jump out. But if you put it into a pan of cold water and heat it up, the frog won't realise and it will die. Or to put it another way, scientists have got a lot of time in their hands. <laughs> Shall we have a go at curing cancer? No, I'm going to see how many fruit pastels it takes to choke a kestrel. <laughs> The, the European Space Agency have successfully crash-landed a probe onto the moon. Now, to me, nothing that crashes is all that successful. <laughs> That's a bit like saying that you've swum the channel because your corpse gets washed up on a beach. <laughs> Scientists have uh, they've put a, a microchip into the brain of a guy who's paralysed. He can only blink, this guy. But with the microchip, he can move a cursor and he can pick out letters and he can communicate. So far, he's managed to write, kill me, kill me, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite science experiment at the minute, they're doing a thing in Switzerland where they're building a giant super collider and they're going to try and work out what makes up protons, the building blocks of protons. That'd be fantastic. Hopefully, the minute they successfully complete the experiment, the whole of our reality will dissolve and a big sign will come up that says, level two. <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about now treating alcoholism with LSD. That's going to make tramps very different people. <laughs> spare change, son. I've got a unicorn to feed. <laughs> what, do you think? Do you think alcoholics don't talk enough shit already? <laughs> Aye, I'll tell you why your mother left me, son, cos she's shagging a merman. <laughs> There's an initiative now where they want to fine the parents of obese children. So you'll get fined for having a fat kid. Now, that's wrong, isn't it? because the parents of obese children are just misguided. What they're trying to do is make their children less attractive to paedophiles. <laughs> what they're forgetting is they're making it difficult for them to run away. <laughs> I often have quite a big beard, but when it gets to a certain length, the beard, that I shave it off, because after a certain length, people start shouting paedophile at me. <laughs> Why do paedophiles always have beards and glasses? What is it about that look that children find so sexy? <laughs> do you remember all that stuff with the paedophile school teachers? That's got to be creepy. You get your homework back and he's drawn a cock on it. <laughs> of the big thick glasses, the paedophiles, does it make the kids look bigger? <laughs> so what if I shagged him? He's six foot two! <laughs> I've got a little daughter now. My daughter's two. And, uh, you know, people say it's very tiring bringing up kids. And it's not. It's not tiring at all if you don't live with the mother. <laughs> She's going to have to cry incredibly loudly to wake me up. <laughs> I mean, the most important thing about bringing up a kid is that you, you nurture their imagination, you know? So I'm a pretty good dad, because I reckon if her dad's not there, that leaves a lot to the imagination. <laughs> In fact, when I write to her, I tell her that I'm the Terminator. Let her little mind run riot. <laughs> great ways of meeting women, kids, you know? Two-year-old daughter, great way of meeting women, especially if you get them little cute tops, say things like future DJ, stuff like that. 
So I've got my, my daughter a little pink top and it says, my mother's dead. <laughs> but my daddy's single. Well, I went that. 